Welcome back to Catalan Soccer. I'm Catalan Ben and today's episode of Football Coach Reacts is all about warm-ups and how to get them right for your players. Let's get straight into it. So first of all, guys, we're going to look at the warm-ups that I see commonly executed by coaches that just do not serve their purpose. They don't warm the players up mentally. They certainly don't warm them up physically and they don't get kids into a fast mindset, which is what they need to be to start the game. The first one we're going to look at, I don't know where coaches get this from. I've never seen it in a book. I've never seen it on a coaching course, but it seems to be a very common one. Between six to 12 players lined up in a dead straight line, waiting for their turn to shoot at goal, where they pass the ball to the coach, the coach passes the ball back to them, and usually with their first touch, a child then runs at the ball, tries to kick it past the goalkeeper. Eight times out of 10, it probably goes wide or over the bar. Now, I understand why coaches will do practice like this when they're working on their own, but you need to make sure that kids are moving and engaged at all times. And this type of warm up where kids are waiting at the back of the very long queue to then take one, maybe two touches when it's their turn, try and hit a shot first time that's not easy to do and very unrealistic to the kind of situations they will find themselves in in a match. I mean, how many times in a game will a kid find themselves in a match, completely unopposed, running onto a ball to hit it first time when they've got loads of time and space? It doesn't really happen at all in kids football. So we need to design warm-ups that are fun, that are engaging, and that are more specific to the type of circumstances kids will find themselves in, in a match. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're coaching on your own, but you want to get kids shooting at goal and trying to score some goals, then pair them up at least or put them into a group of three. If they're in a group of three, they can play a really simple game where they play a triangle of passes and then the kid at the base of the triangle breaks forward with their ball on the dribble and then tries to shoot and score. As we do that, the two kids who've just been the passing players, one of them then slides in to be the next dribbler to attack the goal. And when the kid gets back from taking his turn, he just joins that position that's now vacant and we start the triangle again. We go A to B, B to C, C back to A, and then we drive forward and then go score. So a very similar practice to the one that you guys had in mind in the first place with getting kids shooting at goal, but not with every kid stood there waiting for their turn. And every single kid now is receiving passes, completing passes and getting a chance to dribble and score. You can even set up two, three or four of these triangles to make sure that all kids are engaged. One's attacking the goal from all different angles, some from out wide and some from central. And if you're short of numbers and you can't make a three work, then you can jump in as a coach on one of the triangles to make sure that every kid gets their turn with lots of engagement, lots of chances of success, and make sure that every kid starts in the right fast mindset of quick passes, quick attacks, and lots of shots. The next warm up that I see very commonly delivered by coaches who've got the right idea, but just seem to miss the mark a little bit in the execution of it, the Rondo. Now, everybody has seen Rondos executed by Bayern Munich and Barcelona and Man City and Liverpool and all these incredible teams with these great players where they play 50, 60 passes uninterrupted while defenders are chasing the ball down and trying to get it at, at the ball with high intensity, with a real pressure on the ball and very quick one-touch and two-touch passes. But, be honest, is that how Rondos look when you have 10 to 15 kids around the outside of a center circle with one or two kids in the middle getting nowhere near the ball with massive spaces between players where the press is almost impossible where the quality of the pass lets things down where the game's very slow and most of the kids are just stood watching other kids pass the ball around I was at a game recently where I saw a coach running a rondo like this and they were trying to get kids passing the ball before a game, which makes total sense. But the number of kids involved and the size of the circle made it completely impossible for the defenders to get anywhere near it. So they just switch off and they stop running, stop pressing. And then when there's no pressure on the ball, then the speed of the ball is irrelevant. So there's no point passing it quickly either. And it all broke down and didn't work. You could see the frustration in the coach and you could see the boredom setting very quickly for the kids. So let's look at how you deliver a rondo and if you're going to do that type of practice, how to make it as fun, engaging and fast as possible. First of all is the numbers. I always go with a four to one ratio. I think that the four works really well because you can create a diamond or a square with it. It gives the guy on the ball a couple of options either side. The opposite player to the ball always got to slide and try and support, but it makes sure that the player in the middle does still have some realistic chance of getting the ball from those passing players. Once you go five, six, seven V one, the guy in the middle gives up before the game even starts because he knows that he's running an impossible job. 
For more advanced players, players that can really pass the ball around with a little bit of skill, what you could do is then go to a 5v2 or a 6v2. So yes, we increase the number of players beyond that four, but we also increase the number of defenders as well. So a 5v2 or 6v2 adds a little bit more pressure. And then you can challenge kids to keep the ball away from two defenders or even play the split pass that goes between the two defenders when the time is right. The size of the circle is absolutely imperative that we get this right. If the circle is too big, then the pressing players in the middle can't get the ball. The kids on the outside find it too easy and the game just breaks down. But if the circle is too small, then every other pass is going to get interrupted by a defender winning the ball back. So make sure that you don't have an area that's too big. If it looks like your players are chasing the ball too much and getting absolutely nowhere near it, then shrink the circle in, use a few cones, set yourself up a circle or a square for kids to stay inside. But if your kids are getting no success whatsoever and every first, second or third pass is getting cut out every single time by a defender, then get every kid to take a step back on the outside, open the circle up a little bit and then try again with a slightly bigger area. Now, often defenders in rondos don't really want to be a defender because when they finally get the ball, all they do is just join the outside of the queue. So a good way to get a rondo to finish is when the defender wins the ball, can they dribble out and then score a goal? That encourages the defender to develop some intensity to their press, try and win the ball back quickly so they can get their turn to score. And it means that if the defender does win the ball, then the kids around the outside are making sure that he doesn't break out quickly. He can't just run out of there. They try and win the ball back quick and then get back in their passing game. So introduce a goal as a target for your defender. And the final one is the warm up without a ball. I still see kids as young as seven and eight years old that are just running from touchline to touchline across the pitch, sometimes with some sidesteps or some skips or whatever it is that the coach shouts out. Kids at that age don't need to warm themselves up physically anywhere near as much as an adult. A seven-year-old is very, very unlikely to pull a muscle or pull a tendon from being not warmed up correctly. So these kind of dynamic stretches and movements can all be done with a ball at their feet. And there's no need to do these warm-ups without a ball. If you're going to get kids just running from side to side and covering ground, then that's fine, but do that with a ball at their feet. As kids are dribbling from touchline to touchline, can they be trying to do it in five touches? Can they try and do it with 10 touches to really get lots and lots of dribble touches in? Can they try and reduce the number of touches down to two or three? So it's big touches that get the ball out from their feet. Can they wiggle and weave and change direction, use the inside and outside of their foot? Can they chop? Can they roll the ball as they travel back and forth? So if you're going to do these types of drills where kids are just moving from left to right or just covering ground with side steps and skips and jogging, then why not introduce a ball, get lots of touches in and make sure that every kid has had at least 50 to 100 touches before the kickoff. And remember guys, most warm-ups in kids football are not actually to warm up the muscles or the tendons and that physical side of the body. What we're actually trying to do is we're trying to warm up the mind. We're trying to get the kids in a fast state of mind. We're trying to get the kids ready for the game and the intensity and the pressure that real football comes with. So make sure that your warm-up includes that. Try and build some intensity, some speed and some quick decision-making into your warm-ups. If you're struggling for an idea for a warm-up, we've got a great video just up here. Check the link above my head for my perfect warm-up for a fast start to the game. It's a really engaging game. It gets kids passing the ball. It gets pressing players trying to win the ball. And there's some goal scoring involved too. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video of Football Coaches React. I'll see you in the next one.